Hi there, Libras. Welcome to your weekly reading. Uh, what I'm seeing is there's a like a little creek or a little, uh, it's a small body of water. So it's like a little stream. And I see you building a bridge to get to the other side. And the bridge is made from, you know, brick or a stone. So you're putting in cement and you're, you're building it in a way where it's sturdy. It's not just, you know, some flimsy wooden bridge or straw bridge. You're, you're making sure that um, not only are you building it so that other people could benefit from it, but I feel like you're trying to do things right. And uh, the message of, you know, repairing rifts or mending bridges between you and another person. Um, th that's what I feel, though, is, is coming through when it comes to building these bridges, fixing these bridges. Um, and so the theme of this reading is about, you know, mending bridges between you and other people. If there have been situations where, for whatever reason, too much has been said, too many things have happened and there might have been falling out between you and another person. I feel like it's almost as if you are trying to repair the rift. You're trying to make amends. You're trying to do things to um, bring them back into your life or extending that invitation for forgiveness and to let bygones be bygones between you and another person. I, I also feel like for some of you, I, I'm sensing that you, you might deal with somebody who might have, you know, dependency issues. Um, either they are financially just irresponsible, they might have um, addictions as well. And so the way that they behave is when they need something, they're very sweet and they come to you. But then I, I feel like, you know, their, their dependency issues take over and I feel like they know how to manipulate in order to get what they want. And so, for example, if they need, you know, cash to buy whatever it is that they need to buy, they're very, very sweet. And then when they don't need you, then they don't even give you the time of day. So. I see that element here and I feel like it's somebody that, you know, it could be like a family member, somebody that you, you care for. And so on the one hand, you know what they're up to. You don't want to enable that behavior. But on the other hand, it's really hard for you to say no to somebody that you love. Okay. It's, it's really hard for you to turn them down. It's really hard for you to say no when they turn on the charm. And honestly, I feel this energy can flow both ways because when I heard myself say charm, I always think of Libras as the charmer. So I, I feel like this energy can go both ways. And so over time, one person feels very used and then the per like it, it's one person who constantly gives and gives and gives and the other person takes and takes and takes and one person feels very used. And so I feel like somebody is out trying to mend that broken relationship, trying to make things better, trying to make amends, okay? And it, it's going to be, it, it's great. It's a good time overall to um, kind of rectify situations. Um, I'm also feeling as well, somebody is coming out of um, either depression or drug abuse. They're trying to, I, I feel them getting stronger. So mentally, they're getting stronger. They're able to uh, understand that when it comes to the addiction or when it comes to the situation, um, it kind of uh, took over their lives, okay? So they're trying to make amends. I see somebody doing like the 12-step program, like it could be AA, it could be drug addictions, whatever it is, and they're trying to apologize to all the people in their lives that they have not been good to so somebody's trying to make amends. And then I'm also seeing somebody overcoming like physical addictions. Um, they've dealt with the chills and the fevers and the pains and all of that. And they've conquered it and now they're clean. And I, I see them, you know, getting physically a lot stronger too, mentally and physically. They're getting a lot stronger. They're able to kind of uh, live through this really dark period in their lives, but now they're stronger as a result of it. 
and I feel for some of you, this is somebody you really care about. It's somebody that is meaningful to you and is around you and they're able to make really positive transitions in their life. So if that is the case, let bygones be bygones and be as emotionally supportive as you can when this person is going through, you know, um, such a such a profound transformation in their lives, okay? I'm seeing as well, for some of you though, I, I definitely th see like three parties, three people and a, in a relationship. I'm feeling like some of you are in a committed relationship and you have a new attraction or like a very strong soul connection that is coming into the picture with somebody else. And I feel like you're looking at your hands and you're like, my hands are tied. There's nothing I can do. But the soul connection is very undeniable. What I have here is the two of cups. They're looking at each other and they both recognize the connection that they have with one another. And I feel almost like it's um, nothing can be done. Nothing can be acted upon because you're in a relationship. And yes, this connection is very strong. It's undeniable. And the other person's aware of it too. But they're also aware that your hands are tied. So unless you move away from it, unless you make some major transformation in your life with the death card here and move away from it, then the two of you can be together. And I feel like some of you are, are contemplating you know, like you're building that bridge to extend across the river or the stream so that you can get to the other side. It's a slow process. You're building it brick by brick. It's going to take some time and you're doing it on your, your own. So I feel like some of you are thinking about possibly leaving um, a partner or leaving a marriage situation and you're biding your time or you're waiting for the perfect moment, or you're trying to get everything in order first before you make this transition. You're getting, you know, your finances sorted out. You're trying to figure out where am I going to stay? Uh, where are the kids going to go? Um, it, it's, I, and I feel like you're, you might be doing it by yourself. Like you, you might be consulting a lawyer without your partner knowing you might be um, checking your bank account, trying to talk to a financial planner in order to get the process started. And you're trying to figure out, you know, how much am I going to have to pay in child support? How much am I going to have to pay in alimony? How much um, is the whole, you know, court proceeding going to cost? Am I able to afford it? And things like that. So you're trying to flush out the details. You're doing the preliminary research. But I, I definitely feel like you've already made up your mind that you want to transition. Um, so that's what I'm seeing. And I feel like for many of you, you have left a relationship and you're heading into another relationship. And it seems like there isn't any time at all for, you know, being on your own and healing and, and kind of uh, processing everything that happened. Because I feel like one relationship left you very, very dejected. And then the, the next person that you meet, they, they kind of really uplift you. And so you're transitioning like seamlessly from one relationship to the next. And the universe is pretty much telling you to slow down. Take some time to be on your own. Take some time to process what happened. And take some time for you to be okay first on your own before you rush into this next relationship. They like you, they're not gonna go anywhere. What I have here is the Ace of Cups. This is new love. Something that is brand new, that is being offered to you. And I have here the Nine of Cups, which basically means the person that is coming through, that is the new person, is very much close to your, um, it's like your ideal version of Mr. or Mrs. Wright, okay? So this is somebody that is quite significant and you feel like you can build with this person. Like it's going to be there for the long haul or, or you feel like you can, you know, have a family with this person. So if you feel that way, you need to make sure you come into it 100% ready. And so if you still have, you know, pains and heartache, ten of swords from 
previous relationships or you feel like you still have attachments or emotions that are unresolved or that you're not really sure if you're done with it yet you need to make sure you are done before you transition because this is something that has a lot of potential and you want to do it right okay we want to do things right um I see a lot of people though, um, so I, I do see you and I do see two other people. One is the Two of Cups, one is the Ace of Cups. And we have the Hangman as well that's showing up, which basically means weighing out the pros and cons. Staying in a situation possibly because of financial ties, staying in a situation because of these, um, um, they're, they're kind of like, what do you call them? restrictions they're they're self-imposed restrictions and so you want to free yourself you want to move on but you have these things that are holding you back and and they're not real we have the devil here it's the puppet master it's somebody that has control or sway over you okay but this puppet, he's got a, um, a pair of scissors. He can cut himself loose at any time. So it's nothing that's binding. And it, it's, it's not really, no one is like, you know, holding a knife to your throat and telling you you need to stay. Or no one is threatening bodily harm. No one is forcing you against your will. And so I definitely feel like it's a situation where you're feeling like you're sacrificing your happiness for some greater purpose, for some greater goals. And for example, I feel some of you might have children and you don't want to sever ties with the, um, your existing partner because you don't want the children to grow up in a broken home. And that's very noble. And I feel some of you feel like you're making sacrifices. You're sacrificing your happiness um, to provide that stable home life for the kids. You're sacrificing your new relationship so that you can, you know, be a better um, I guess be a better parent and that's the way you're looking at it that's the way you justify the situation that's the way you rationalize the situation and once again this can also be the person that you're dealing with um, some of you might be dealing with somebody who's in another relationship and that's how they're rationalizing their situation and in the meantime you wait for them to sort out things from their end and I feel like it's gonna be quite a long waiting process and if you're okay with that then that's fine but I feel like it's not gonna be you know um, a few months I feel like it might be a few years so if they're if that's how they rationalize it you might need to kind of ask yourself if that's if, if the wait is okay for you if you don't have a definitive end date are you okay with that are you okay with waiting and then likewise, if you don't have, if you're the one that's in the relationship and you don't have the definitive end date, is it fair to ask the other person to wait for you? Okay, so this dynamic, I definitely th see like three people. I definitely see a relationship that should end. And I, I feel like a new relationship has the potential to be really great. But for whatever reason, somebody is rationalizing staying in a situation because they feel like there's a, a noble, like a nobler, a more noble, um, they're making a sacrifice for a noble end. And I feel like that's not really the case. Um, there definitely is some financial entanglements between them and another person. So if if their rationale is, you know, it's for a, a noble cause, I, I think like that's a lie that they tell themselves that's not really grounded in reality and I keep getting this you know this hangman somebody is saying something rationalizing a situation and it's not really grounded on reality it's kind of like the lie that we tell ourselves to make the situations more to justify a situation or to make a situation more bearable but it's not really grounded on reality okay so i definitely see some financial entanglements that's uh, disallowing one person to leave and that's all it is it has nothing to do with a noble cause or anything like that and so let's not fool ourselves um i i just feel like 
I, I just feel like if someone just makes up their mind and leaves a situation, everything would be so much better. All the cards on the bottom row promise a lot of new beginnings and love and abundance. We have here the Two of Cups, the Death card, the Nine of Cups, which is a wish card, the Ace of Cups, which is the brand new love, and the Four of Swords, which is, you know, no more fighting, no more um, pettiness, an end to all of that, and spiritual ascension. So everything here is just really, really good. If somebody chooses to just walk away and move on to the new phase in their lives, everything will be so much better. But all the cards on top indicate to me here, we have the Ten of Swords, which is betrayal. The Three of Wands reverse, waiting for something and it's not coming in. The Devil being tied to something. The Hangman being stuck in limbo. And the Fool in the reverse not making a change. Doing the same things over and over and over again and not getting a different result. Because, you know, of course, right? If you keep doing the same things, you get the same outcome. So we have some things here that we have to kind of face up to the truth about. And it could be, you know, somebody that you're dealing with or you might be in the situation and things are not working out anymore. But you keep building, you keep trying to mend the bridges, you keep trying to fix things. Um, I'm seeing as well. I'm seeing as well, for many of you, um, there is a big realization here that I, what I'm feeling is um, there might be friends or there might be habits that you're headed towards that might not be good for you, okay? Um, I see overindulgence. I, I also see a lot of drugs and alcohol and dependency. And I, I, I honestly feel drugs. And so you could be whatever age watching this. But I, I, I feel almost like you want to be a little bit careful about who you surround yourself with. And you want to be careful about the choices that you make. And you want to be careful as well. Um, mending bridges with the people, the relationships that have gone south, the people that really care about you, uh, you want to just be careful about that, okay? Maintaining and preserving those relationships and putting them um, in a place of sacredness so that they don't get tarnished, so that they don't get um, damaged, okay? So really valuing the proper relationships and the proper people. And I know that I tend to get a little bit negative when it comes to um, readings for Libra, but I, I feel like, I feel like this reading in general, there's definitely two different paths here that you can take. One path means letting go, letting the past go jumping into something new, a new love relationship, a new partner that is waiting, waiting, waiting for you. And then the other path is about stagnation and it's about, you know, uh, toxic situations. And I feel for some of you who might be a little bit younger too, branching off with a new group of friends who care about you, rather than getting involved with these group of friends who actually get you in trouble. Okay, so um, that's what I'm getting here with this spread. And um, I, I really can't, you know, interpret it another way. And I, I feel like, you know, you have so much potential here to, to walk the right path. Let me see why that is. Why are the energy so split? What's going on here? So once again, this reading might run longer than expected, but I feel like I want to get the message why the energy is so like split right down the middle. 
Um, first of all, we have here the world, and this usually denotes to me as well, you know, um, a, a sense of protection. And here's the thing, when it comes to this protection, there is divine protection where, and, and you know, Sagittarius, they, they get this because they're, they are always divinely guided and protected. Um, they're, they're kind of clumsy and a lot of the times they overestimate their abilities. And I, I don't know if, you know, Sagittarius are cross watching. If you are, no offense, but Sagittarius tend to overestimate the capabilities. They overextend their time and they, they're a little bit more accident prone. But they always bounce back. They always, you know, land on their feet. It's divine protection. They're divinely protected by their ruling planet Jupiter. Okay. And then I feel for many of you, there's a sense here about somebody being very sheltered. Okay. Um, protection coming from not so much from the divine, but coming from a physical person. Every time you run into trouble, somebody is there to bail you out. Okay, so it, it's it's like you're living in a bubble. You're living in a bubble and you feel like uh, life can never go wrong because every time something happens, somebody comes and bail me out. And obviously this is not going to apply to everybody. Um, it's going to apply to those select few that are dealing with this issue because I'm asking why the energy is so split down the middle. It's like you're hitting a fork in the road and you're trying to decide on the path that you want to take and one path will negate the other. If you choose this path where you're surrounding yourself with the wrong people and getting tempted to do the wrong things, that's what life is going to be like. Stagnation, lack of progress, okay? If you're choosing this really beautiful path, new friends, self-love, moving forward, recognizing like mending bridges okay mending the the rifts between you and other people uh, acknowledging the mistakes that we have made to create these rifts and then aiming to not make those mistakes in the future i feel like it's going to allow you to reach a place of harmony but going back to this every time we make a mistake somebody comes into the picture and bail us out we don't learn we don't learn as a result and I feel like this is what life is about. Every time you've made a mistake in the past, somebody has come and bailed you out. And so you're at this junction in your life right now. And you feel like, oh, if I take this path here, which is not good for me, um, at the end of the road, somebody's gonna, you know, bail me out. And that's a fallacy. I don't think that's gonna happen. But you believe in it. And so what you do right now is very, very important, Libra. Don't let the choices that you make negatively affect the people around you. And especially don't make, let the choices that people around you negatively affect your life as well. Surround yourself with better people. Surround yourself with people that really care about you. Okay, you have a lot of love here. Um, so that's what I'm feeling, and I feel like that's why the, the, the cards are so clearly split down the middle. Um, a lot of the times, you know, uh, life deals us with difficult circumstances and difficult situations. Um, because before we were even born, we sign a soul contract. The lessons that we want to learn, the people that we want to meet, the people that we choose to be with, all of those are basically signed and created with your soul contract. And I feel like you have a lot of soulmates along the way that are trying to, they're, they're in your life to show you a better way to, to help us alleviate a situation. And I feel like you might not have realized who those people are until they're no longer in the picture. And then I also feel like, you know, the, the life that you, ch you have chosen, it comes with a lot of divine protection, people protecting you, sheltering you from the negative things. But I feel like it's disallowing you an opportunity to really live your life, make your own choices, 
and to deal with your own con uh, consequences of those choices because they always are there to soften the blow or cushion the fall or protect you in some way and it's creating this false sense of security is what I'm feeling. Um, I hope the reading makes sense and um, I hope you choose the right path. I honestly hope the reading resonates, okay? Because, you know, I feel like somebody needs to hear this message. So I hope it is helpful. I hope that you have a very wonderful holiday season, spend the time with your family, and once again, you know, um, mend those bridges, okay? It's never too late. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next week, okay? Hopefully the reading will be a lot um, less muddled, okay? So my apologies. Take care of yourself, Libras.